Hello and welcome. I'm excited to be joining you today for the Coppin State Center for Strategic Entrepreneurship 2021 Economic Inclusion Conference. My name is Scott Phillips and I'm the director of the MBDA Mid-Atlantic Advanced Manufacturing Center. I'm excited to join you today to talk about the center, what we're working on, our new initiative, the MyHub Co-op, and to share some of the experience we've had over the last five years working in the vineyard. But before I do, I'd like to share a brief video that we prepared to talk about some of our work. So join me for the video. A Little bit of background about the Minority Business Development Agency and our center. Our center was awarded approximately four years ago to focus on advanced manufacturing services for minority-owned firms here in the Mid-Atlantic region. And our center uh, provides a number of services, access to capital, access to contracts, access to markets, global business development, strategic business consulting, advanced manufacturing training, and manufacturing industry advocacy. We do this every day. Um, it is my pleasure to participate in this endeavor. We have approximately 40 clients that we work with on a day in and day out basis. And then we have over 300 firms that we communicate with at least once a month, providing access to various training opportunities and shared infrastructure to increase the success of minority manufacturers in the advanced manufacturing industry. But now that you've had a brief overview of MEDA and my hub, I'd like to go into a little more detail. First, I'll talk about the Advanced Manufacturing Center, and then we'll talk about that new initiative, the My Hub Co-op or the Manufacturing Innovation Hub Cooperative. So, you've heard that the Advanced Manufacturing Center is a um, organization that was developed uh, that provides services, but it is funded by the United States Department of Commerce, Minority Business Development Agency, and is operated by the city of Baltimore. We're very fortunate, we're one of few centers that is actually operated by a municipality. So what does the center do? Our role is to provide assistance to minority manufacturers and those minorities can be African American, Asian, Native American, they're ethnic minorities. And what type of services do we provide? We provide access to capital, access to contracts, access to markets, global business development, strategic consulting, advanced manufacturing training, and manufacturing industry advocacy. In those areas, specifically, we work with banks, to assist with access to capital. We work with the client to help them to determine the best way to secure contracts and to expand markets. We work with organizations like Exim Bank to work on global business development. And then we work with a number of our key strategic stakeholders, which I'll talk about in a moment, to assist with advanced manufacturing training and manufacturing advocacy. So MBDA, as I mentioned, is a network of centers that have been funded by the United States Department of Commerce. There are over 40 centers around the country. We're fortunate because we're considered a specialty center. MBDA funds import-export centers. It funds centers that focus specifically on finance. And it also funds uh, a federal procurement center. But like us, there are three other advanced manufacturing centers, one located in Detroit, San Antonio, Atlanta, and of course here in Baltimore. We couldn't do the work that we do without our core strategic stakeholders uh, or partners. One of the organizations who has worked with us very closely is the Regional Manufacturing, Regional Manufacturing Institute of Maryland which is led by Dr. Mike Galeazzo. When we first started 
down this path, uh, Mike and I worked very closely to secure the first grant that we received from Commerce. In addition, we worked closely with the Maryland Manufacturing Extension Partnership of Maryland MEP. We've been fortunate because we are operated by the City of Baltimore to work with our operator, the Mayor's Office of Small Minority and Women Business, which is led by Paul Taylor. In addition, we're working very closely, when we talk about access to capital, with the Meridian Management Group. We work with Harbor Bank, we work with m and and a number of the local uh, financial institutions here in the area, but our strategic partner is the Meridian Management Group. In addition to that, we've worked with the State of Maryland, with the Governor's Office of Small Minority and Women Business, also with the uh, Maryland Department of Commerce and uh, its focus on manufacturing. We've participated in the uh, Governor's Task Force focused on returning manufacturing uh, as a result of the pandemic. Through these relationships, we are actually able to provide assistance to our clients with organizations like the Virginia Manufacturing Association and Smart States. Um, our work has taken us from Virginia to the south, to New Jersey to the north. Somewhere around 75 to 80 percent of our clients and customers that we deal with on a regular basis are here in Maryland. So, as we've been doing this work, one of the things that we realized is the ecosystem for manufacturing in and of itself is a challenge, but the ecosystem, building that ecosystem to support minority manufacturers has been even more of a challenge. When we first began identifying uh, clients or potential participants in our program, they were very fractured. They didn't communicate with one another and often did not participate in the larger organizations. One of our roles was to bring those individuals together. And one of the things we realized is one way to do that is by creating a co-op. Thus, the Manufacturing Innovation Hub Cooperative. Through this vehicle, uh, which is uh, owned and operated by the members themselves and democratically controlled, what we have begun is an opportunity for these individuals to share both resources, expertise, and opportunities. The services that are provided through the co-op include turnkey product design, prototyping, and scalable production. Also, capacity building and business development. This turnkey product design is actually performed with one of our partners, Harbor Design. This is where we're located today, in the MyHub co-op space within Harbor Design. Our business development is being provided by technical and business develop development experts, subject matter experts. So when a person or a firm or a client comes to us, the first thing we do is our client intake. We want to understand what that client's concerns and challenges are, and then we attempt to find the right resources to apply so that we can grow that business. We come to this with a team of subject matter experts. Myself, I have a background in Fortune 100 company, spending over 29 years with one of my focus areas being building a relationship with smaller minority-owned businesses and helping to build capacity in those businesses. To the left there is Mark Lawrence. Mark is a, what I would call an alum of Deloitte. He is the owner and operator of Incubate, which focuses on enhancing and innovating uh, with firms. Josh Barnes, I've mentioned, is the principal here at Harbor Design. Anthony Robinson, uh, the former director of what was called InbelDef, which focused on minority business development, equity, and inclusion. He is the individual that 
really kind of connects our clients with resources and serves as the key advocate for our manufacturing opportunities and engagement. We also have Alan Hirsch, and Alan is the gentleman that runs our CEO advisory. And the CEO advisory is a key component of what we do here with the Advanced Manufacturing Center in my hub. It gives the individual clients an opportunity to come in and to do peer mentoring. Once a month, clients come in, they share their issues, their concerns, their challenges, and their opportunities, and they hear from their peers on ways of actually addressing and growing um, and correcting, if necessary, uh, some of the things that they're facing. And then finally, we have our project administrator, Ms. Christine Plater. And Christine has been with us since the very beginning. She is the person who kind of keeps the trains moving. Uh, she is the glue to our organization. So you have an idea of the scope and the skill set of the organization. Talk to you a little bit more about how we're formed. We're very fortunate, once again, to be operated by the city of Baltimore. So all of our back-end effort is managed by Reginald Mack, who um, handles all of our finance. Uh, and he works for Paul Taylor, who is a member of Mayor Brandon Scott's cabinet here in the city of Baltimore. Now, none of this is, would work if you couldn't get in contact with us. So we have uh, found a way to uh, approach different platforms, and social media platforms and our website. Whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn, you're able to reach us. You can reach us through the web at myhubcoop.com, that's M-I-H-U-B-C-O-O-P.com, or through baltimorembda.com. And when reaching us, we encourage you to engage. Each month, as I mentioned, we do our CEO advisory. That is by invitation, but you can request to participate. We also have our My Hub Mondays, where we bring in subject matter experts to deal with an array of topics. We've had uh, subject matter experts talking about the Internet of Things, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, but we've also had our groups come in to deal with some of the challenges we've faced in the midst of the pandemic, to talk about accessing capital through the Payroll Protection Program or the SBA's EIDL program. We've also had folks come in just to talk about resources and the resources that are available to minority businesses specifically, but entrepreneurs generally. We work from Virginia to New Jersey with federal, state, and local government and the private sector. We're very fortunate to maintain a very close relationship with the Capital Region Minority Supplier Development Council, which is an affiliate of the National Minority Supplier Development Council. So as we close this formal presentation, I did want to share with you a few highlights of the work that uh, we've done over the course of the last five years. And we have a brief video that will take you through some of the numbers and give you some additional information about the center and the types of firms that we work with. I would like to highlight that one of the things that we learned is that working with manufacturers, we have to meet them where they are, and we also have to segment them. So we're working very closely in what I would call the consumer goods products sector. We're working with folks that are in more of an industrial manufacturing sector. And then we're working with firms who are really doing innovative things. In the, in the consumer goods, we're working with folks that are producing food goods like baked in Baltimore or clothing like Fashion Spa House. And we're working with organizations in the industrial sector like FabPro who are doing metal fabrication or prime manufacturing which does, which provides um, contract manufacturing, or Trinity Sterile, which is doing medical devices. And then in the innovation sector, we're working with 
organizations like New Tech, which is providing specialized transportation uh, hubs for individuals to have a different experience as they're waiting for a bus or a train. Or Sanabi Labs, which is using sound to help diagnose uh, pneumonia and other ailments. So we're very fortunate in the mix of firms that we've had an opportunity to work with. And we're inviting those who are participating in the conference to, today to visit us, as I mentioned, on social media, or give us a call at 443-401-0242. So as we finish the formal presentation, once again, join us as we take a little bit of a walk down memory lane on some of the things that we've accomplished, and hopefully a forbidding of the future of what we will accomplish. Uh, particularly, we're excited about working with the Center for Strategic Entrepreneurship. Thank you, and I look forward to our questions and answers. Over $50 million in contractual and financial transactions that have gone to our clients with our assistance. We have seen the success and brought people together in an ecosystem so that they can share both in their successes and their challenges through our CEO advisory. We've also provided information even in the midst of this new world virtually through our My Hub Mondays. And finally, the, the big thing that's coming next is our MyHub Cooperative, where we're going to give people the opportunity to come together collectively to own it, to manage it, and to grow it.